Hey horror fans, welcome back to Room 237, coming at you with another review for Ho Ho Horror. First, I just want to apologize for my Christmas Evil video. My camera app was fucked up, and I didn't realize it until after I shot that video. Couldn't rotate it. We'll just have to live with it. So, like I said in my Christmas Evil review, when I saw that years ago, I wasn't a fan, but I rewatched it, and I actually uh, dug it. This movie I just saw for the first time, and I don't think there's any saving it. Don't open till Christmas, 1984. Jesus Christ, this. This movie is a good example why if you're gonna change directors, start from scratch. Because this movie did not just have one director or two. It had three. By the time production was done, it had three. Now, Don't Open Till Christmas, of course, is a, a British sla slasher film. It came out in 1984, the same year as uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. And if you ask me, this... This movie is sleazier and, you know, if anyone <clears throat> must be pissed off at any kind of how bad this movie is, more so this. Sorry, hat's kind of long. Anyway, uh, let's see, production, just so I could get the story of the directors. Um. So, the original director was uh, uh, Edmund Purnum, who also acts in the film. He was also in Pieces. He quit. Then a guy, Derek Ford, who was a writer, took over, but he was fired after two days. The distributors then hired Ray Self to complete, and Alan Birkinshaw to rewrite parts of the script, including the original ending at the London dungeon sequence much of the footage was completely refilmed and Edmund Purnum later returned to finish and you really can tell I mean watching this movie it is a clusterfuck of a mess right? the only good thing about this movie would be the kills I mean, this movie does have a high body count, so it's definitely, you know, worth checking out as far as the slasher film. But it's so random. Uh, like, Silent Night, Deadly Night has scenes where it's just random people. For example, uh, Lydia Quigley or the kids going sledding. Yes, those are random characters that just come out of nowhere. But this is ridiculous. I mean, almost every kill, most of them, is just random scenes. And also, the movie can't make up its mind over who the lead is. You have, like, these two detectives trying to solve these murders, and then... You have this guy that's a suspect who's with a woman whose father was killed in the beginning. Then you got this girl that works at a peep show. And the movie keeps steering you in the direction of each of these leads. But then they will just drop off the face of the film for the rest of the movie. Or they will become more prominent later on. I will say the idea is pretty different. I mean, usually when you have like a Christmas horror film, you know, with the exception of say like Gremlins or something like that, it's usually a killer Santa. I mean, Christmas Evil, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Uh, I do believe there is one called To All a Good Night, which is, I could be wrong, but I think that's not the killer Santa. 
Black Christmas, that's not a killer Santa, but for the most part, it, it usually is. This film, however, there's a guy going around killing people dressed as Santa. So you get a completely different kind of premise, and it's kind of interesting. But it really sucks that you have just this cluster fuck up. I can't even really properly explain this film because it's such a mess. Really, you have this guy with a translucent Alice Sweet Alice mask going around killing various people dressed as Santa. Like in the opening of the film, there's a big Christmas party. There's the Santa with like one of those blower things and a spear goes through the back of his head and out the little party balloon. You do get interesting deaths. I mean, I'll give it that. And the effects aren't, aren't that bad at all. A lot of them are actually pretty well done. And you usually won't hear me complain like this, but there was so many deaths, like so many kills so close together, I actually forgot a lot of them. I mean, there's another another Santa, like, he's at like a grill, he's like a homeless guy with a grill, or he's outside grilling, and he gets his face pushed up against the grill, and his face is all burnt up. Um, <clears throat> another one gets castrated at the urinal. You don't see it, but it, it's implied. I will say the way it's implied is well done. It, it's not like that movie um, Gutter Balls, which if you see Gutter Balls, you know how the castration scene of that goes. That's pleasant. Or, you know, like stabs in the neck. And it, like there's this old, older Santa at this peep show. He's, he's in the nudie booth, you know, like a, a Randall from Clerks. He's in a nudie booth. Gets stabbed in the neck and blood just sprays all over the window. And the girl in the nudie booth ends up becoming like one of our leads. She was just an ancillary character. Because you have these two detectives trying to solve it. And then you have this guy who's dating the daughter or is with the daughter of the Santa. They got the spear through the head in the beginning. And just at random points, they just drop off. Like that guy, who I believe is uh, uh, Edmund Purdom. Which I, I can't even look at the cast because Chief Inspector Ian Harris is Edmund Purdom. Okay, so it's not that guy, but I uh, I couldn't even follow the names because, oh. It does say here that the, unfortunately, Alan Lake, who plays the killer, committed suicide shortly after this film was released. Kind of sucks. Does really say, oh, shot himself. Son's bedroom. Wow. Let's lighten the mood a little bit, talk about some more deaths. So it, and that's the thing, like, with Alice Sweet Alice, you can have a translucent mask. Yeah, because it kind of works. Here, though, all these characters have a distinct look that when you look at the killer and you look at the one other character that sort of, because the women who have gotten away from the killer say they talk about his eyes. It, his eyes looked like he was smiling. But there's only one other character that sort of looks like that mask would fit. So it's not a big twist or a big reveal. It's pretty obvious. But 
Yo, th this movie is just so poorly written, poorly acted. I mean, there was one part. There's the guy that's like with the girl whose dad was killed. He has a friend that's a photographer. And that's another character we follow for a little bit, and then he drops off. The photographer, he's doing like a, a nude photo shoot with this woman. But they're over there talking. And he just walks out with a Santa suit. And, of course, her dad was killed, dressed as Santa. So she freaks out. And he's just sitting there like, like, well, what's her problem? And the guy literally grabs the suit. He's just like... Oh, you like that's the acting that we're dealing with in this movie and yeah so the acting is terrible the writing is god awful the editing is piss poor and again like if you're gonna change directors you really got to either start from scratch or something. And actually right now, I'm just trying to remember all the deaths. Oh yeah, the Santa that got killed with the grill. He was roasting chestnuts over an open fire. So there's that. The guy at the peep show gets stabbed in the neck and blood Gets all over the. Oh, and then there's like that part where there's this one drunk Santa. He's on his bike and he flips off these 80s London punks. They chase him down the road. He's on his bike. He ditches his bike. Then they take it. He climbs down like a bridge and like a bank. And then a dog chases him. Then he ends up at this, like, a, a dungeon exhibit. And he gets stabbed in the gut. There's another part where he had, like, a... The killer had, like, a blade in his shoe. Like a... Like a Bond thing or, like, a Joker thing. That, that was kind of random. Again, it's obvious who the killer is. It really gets confusing because a lot of your main characters, like the two detectives, the suspect, the photographer, they all kind of look alike. They all have dark, longer, dark hair. They all kind of look alike. And, I mean, it was made for a very low budget. Plus, I watched this on YouTube because I don't own the movie. And the only way I could watch it was with Greek subtitles. So that was distracting. And now I sound like shit because my nose is all stuffed up. I mean, excuse me. Sorry about that. I just, I don't have much more to say about this movie. Yeah, the castration. And yeah, I mean, really not too much to say because the movie is so poorly put together, I can't even do that good of a review. It really is just... It's like they had all the kills put in place... To an extent, I will say they did put some thought into some of them, and the effects do work. I can say that. But, a lot of it is just so random, there's no reason why... I mean, I guess the best way to look at it is, it's Christmas time, lots of people are dressed up as Santa. It, you're gonna find them. Oh. And, pretty much, the reason... The killer doesn't like Santa because when he was a kid, th there was a guy dressed as Santa who did something and it traumatized him. Much like Silent Night, Deadly Night.
uh, and the killer's the brother of another character. I mean, I don't know why I'm being so vague. Probably because I had a hard time following. I was, it was actually putting me to sleep because I wasn't invested because it was so poorly put together. I mean, <clears throat> granted, I'm not even the biggest fan of Christmas Evil. I mean, I enjoyed it last time I watched it, but some of it was silly, but at least I was invested. You know, one of the movies I have planned for this season is Jack Frost. And Jack Frost I saw when I was a kid, and I saw it a couple years ago. I can honestly say that movie, the one, with, not the Michael Keaton one, the killer snowman one, <laughs> is more of an entertaining and well put together movie than this. Just... When you have three directors and a handful of writers trying to fix the last person's work, you get a cluster fuck. You really do. I I can't recommend this movie. If you have to see every 80s slasher film, or if you just, you know, you want to check out different holiday-themed horror films, Go on YouTube and watch it with Greek subtitles if you want, but I can guarantee you, you're probably not going to enjoy it. This literally is one of those slasher films. I was actually thinking about this while I was watching it. With the acting, the kills, and every, it feels like Herschel Gordon Lewis did this, but it's not near gory enough to be a Herschel Gordon Lewis film. The acting reminded me of it. The acting alone reminded me of it. But yeah. Just, it really is one of those movies that, you know, non-slasher fans think of slasher films. You only, you, it's only made and you only watch it for the kills. But with this one, it really has no other redeeming factor it's got some good kills decent effects and there's plenty of them that's really it everything else is god awful but anyway that is 1984's don't open till christmas i would say don't open it at all <laughs> but anyway thank you for watching